intros and another forum chat. Before we get started, it really helps us if you can like, subscribe, comment and click the bell for notifications so you always get our up-to-date material. This week's forum chat is a subject that's discussed all the time. It comes up in lots and lots of conversations, forums, Facebook groups, customers in my office all the time. They know I used to work at Aston in engine design development and, and it's a question I, I hear lots of. This is, is the V12 engine really created from Ford, Duratec or derived from that architecture, from, from that family? Uh, yes it is and uh, in this video I'm just going to go through uh, a brief uh, history of that engine. It's worth at this point watching this, uh, put a link up to it now, uh, Drive Tribe video where they've done a really really good video talking about this subject. The 5.9 litre naturally aspirated Aston Martin V12 is a glorious piece of British engineering and yet it has been saddled with a rumour that makes it somewhat less grand, a rumour brought about by some of the biggest names in the business. Really like that video, worth watching that then coming back to this. So DB7 with the inline six engine, that project, the ride handling of the car and some engine work, taking that Jag engine, putting the supercharger on, was done at Tom Walkinshaw Racing. And round about 95, 96, they put together a prototype, Tom Walkinshaw Racing put together a prototype DB7 with a V12 engine in it, which came from uh, the world of JAG, uh, the V12 race world. So that car was on Top Gear, Clarkson drove that, and uh, if you can find that clip on YouTube, I've searched, I can't find it anymore. Uh, he got out that car, uh, absolutely raving about how, how wonderful that car was, and in 95, it, it would have been. Then fast forward to 99 and Aston Martin do come out with a V12 Vantage uh, V12 engine version of the DB7. So in that four-ish year period, Aston must have been uh, aware of that prototype from Tom Walkinshaw. I'm sure they evaluated it. And internally there was a decision not to go with that and go with their own homegrown motor. Now I'll put a link up to a Ford Racing Products page. Go and have a read of that whole document, it's quite good. But on the second page, and I zoom into it now, this is Ford's own description of Ford commissioned Porsche to do an engineering concept study. And that concept study came up with a uh, crank, ladder frame, bolting arrangement, cylinder heads, finger followers, basically the architecture which is one cylinder of that engine. So whether that is upright and in a square four or whether that's in a, in a V, it's replicated, one cylinder replicated to create a multi-cylinder engine. So that one cylinder piston diameter, uh, liner diameter, stroke, valve lift, valve size, squish, compression ratio, the rotating reciprocating parts, bearings, all of that concept study was done by Porsche and then Aston or Ford, the research laboratory it was at the time, has then got that block at V12 configuration into a production state. So the story goes they handed over the Porsche engineering work to, to Cosworth and who knows how much or how little they had to do to turn that single cylinder concept into a multi cylinder engine V12 configuration. The DB7 came out in 99 and then we've got 2004 DB9 and then 2008 V12V DBS, so it's gone from about 440 horsepower DB7, uh, 450-ish horsepower DB9, 
then it went to 470, 510. Then it had uh, dual inlet and exhaust cam BBT, some knock sensing, combustion chamber was changed, and that motor in DB9.2 pumped out 510 horsepower, but it was power restricted on the throttle because the Vanquish, which it was based on, puts out 565. And decatted and a few other bits and bobs seized that engine, uh, so they say, up to 600 horsepower, but uh, we've dyno tested lots and the standard motor doesn't give out any more than 545 and with a set of decats on it, it's, it's probably about 565, but uh, hey, the, they can sign the engine off to certain standards and I'm sure they signed it off to those, meaning that they can declare the power outputs they do. That doesn't equate to the real world and everyone knows that, so there's no nothing astonishing there. So that is the, the progression of the V12 engine and I have been to Cologne engine plant many many times and in working with the engineers at Cologne to produce the engine uh, you know more or less side by side you can see Ford engines that are being made and yeah rods, pistons, everything is being mass produced identical parts for those engines. Um, to say that there's any any detriment from this, well there isn't, because take a single cylinder, regardless of what follows behind it, whether there's three other cylinders it's in line for, or whether there's 11 under other cylinders because it's a multi-cylinder V12 engine, it's been durability tested to an extremely high standard. So rods, pistons, valve train, so whether, whether it's one cylinder or many, in that one cylinder it behaves the same, uh, that's durability tested. Then independently, because of the differences that are on the V12 engine, the crank has been durability tested, the head casting, the block casting. So taking a load of mass produced, durability tested components and putting them into a bespoke block and heads is basically what we're talking about here. Uh, I, I see no problem with that. Uh, in fact, it's, it's quite good because it could have gone one of two other ways. If they hadn't carried over Ford stuff, which was durability tested, they could have spent lots and lots of money on exotic metals, materials, and guaranteed durability. But what car company does this? Because they all go in the opposite direction, which is spend as little as they can to get away with, and then that's when you start encountering durability reliability problems. Fortunately, the V12 engine in DB7, Vanquish, DB9, uh, there are no fundamental hiccups which affect those engines, engine after engine, and uh, this is because fundamentally it's carrying over mass-produced, in this case Ford, uh, durability, high durability standard components. So, yes, it is it does have its architecture in one cylinder of Ford. That architecture was engineered by Porsche at Ford's instruction. And instead of Aston going with Tom Walkinshaw's V12 concept, they went with Ford's. Then at that crossover point, that 96 to 98, just before production, that's when that engine was born. So that just fills in a little bit of uh, the data that Drive Tribe were missing in this PDF sheet from Ford, which states exactly where that engine rests in their uh, in their line items.